What's going on everybody? My name is Matt and today I'm going to be showing you how to set up a Raspberry Pi Zero 3 or Raspberry Pi 4 totally headless, meaning um, you won't need the HDMI cable to interact with the device. You can do it all over your network without plugging it into a monitor. So in this video we're going to image an SD card. Uh, I'm going to show you the two different methods for doing so using Raspberry Pi Imager and Bellina Etcher. And then I'm going to create an SSH file to enable remote SSH access. And then we're going to create a file called WPA Supplicant, which will allow the device to connect to our wireless network on boot up. And then I'm going to show you how to locate the device on your network using Nmap. We'll connect to it. We'll do some fun stuff. So let's just hop right into the video. Uh, to get the Raspberry Pi OS downloader, if you go to raspberrypi.org and you go to software, uh, you can download the, their, their imager right here, which I already have downloaded and installed. You can select your operating system, and they have other operating systems in here, including Ubuntu Core and Server and, and, and some stuff like Kodi. Uh, it's, it's, all, it's all built in here. Um, what's really nice is you just tell it what operating system you have or you want to use, uh, and then you point it to your SD card, and then you click right. It does all the work for you. Now, Bellina Etcher is a very similar product, but a little bit different. You have to already download the file, which luckily, I already have an, uh, an image downloaded. This is Ubuntu 20.04.2 server OS. It's a 64-bit OS, and this will be going into my Raspberry Pi 4, so a 64-bit OS is perfect for me. I'm going to click Open, select my target, I'm going to select my little SD card, and then we'll click Flash. Uh, we'll let Windows continue and do its thing, and then while we're waiting on that to happen, we need to create the SSH file. So if we open up Notepad, and we take a blank file and save as, and then we just name it SSH dot, but change the save as type to all files. The dot with no letters after the extension removes the extension. So if you click save, uh, we now, if we go back to our documents folder, we now have a blank SSH file. Uh, now we need to create one from Raspberry Pi's website. They have a documentation portion on how to set up this Pi headless onto the wireless. So we're going to copy this code block, okay? And then we're going to hop back into our notepad and paste it in here. Now we just got to set a few variables, our country, US. Set your country code applicable to you, and then our SSID, Matt's wireless, and then down here we'll go uh, punch in the uh, Matt wireless password. That's not really my password, but that's what I'm going to show you. And anyway, we'll do WPA underscore supplicant dot C-O-N-F. And now again, we'll have to change our file type, save as type to all files. But WPA underscore supplicant.com is now uh, created. So now, once our flashing has been completed, what we can do is we can unmount our, uh, our drive and then remount it. And then we can drag and drop these files onto our uh, the SD card. And then we can boot up our SD, uh, or sorry, we can boot up our Raspberry Pi and we will be able to connect to it, and I'll show you. Well, let's just wait for Belina Etcher to finish what it's doing. All right, the flash is complete. So I'm gonna exit out of the Raspberry Pi imager, and I'm even gonna exit out of Belina Etcher. If I remove my SD card from my uh, reader, and I pop it back in, uh, Windows will say you need to format it. Don't worry. It's just because it has a different partition. If we open up here, we'll see a little uh, drive called System Boot. Uh, so now what we'll do is we'll drag and drop both of these files, SSH and the WPA supplicant comp, into uh, the, this, this boot drive, and we are done. We can now pop this, uh, this SD card into our Raspberry Pi, and boot it up. So let me do so, and when we return, we'll use Nmap to locate it. Now, we need to find it on our network. We're going to use a tool called Nmap to do so, but before we hop into Nmap, we need to open up a command prompt. We need to check our IP address. IP config. Now, if we look down here, we'll see the default gateway. 192.168.0.1. Uh, 
Now, an IP address ending in zero indicates that it is a network name. It is not a routable address. So that's cool. So we're going to go to quick scan and we're going to go to 192.168.0.0. Now, dot one would work, but dot zero is the correct way to do it. Forward slash 24 selects the subnet. So that is the range of IP addresses from dot one to dot 255. Now, Nmap is just going to ping all the devices. So now that it's reported back, we see Raspberry Pi Foundation. And that is connected to the IP address. I don't like the way Nmap does it, but that is connected to 192.168.0.19. 19, yes. So now if we open up Putty, we can go to 192.168.0.19. We'll hit enter, and we will accept the, the server key. And the default login is Pi, and the password is Raspberry. Now, once we're in here, we've, we have successfully connected. Uh, via uh, SSH. So now that we've made our first successful connection, the very first thing I am going to do is I'm going to create a user account for myself. sudo super user do uh, user add pipe or dash m to make a home directory and then I'll name it Matt. So now if we change directory to home and we do list, we see Matt and Pi both have uh, home directories. So now we'll go back to our, our Pi's home directory and we are going to go to sudo apt update. sudo apt update uh, reaches out and it compares your packages uh, installed to the packages that are currently available on the apt repositories and will compare their version. And then it will tell you if you have any that need to be upgraded. Uh, and then we're just going to give this some time to do that. So then it says 35 packages can be upgraded. We do apt list uh, upgradable. We can see, we can print a list of the 35 packages that if we do sudo apt upgrade, these will get upgraded. So we're going to do just that. sudo apt upgrade. And I'm going to do a hyphen yes. So we just did our sudo apt uh, upgrade. So the last thing we're going to do is show you how to install an application. So we'll do sudo apt install NeoFetch. NeoFetch is just a neat little utility to um, look at your system information. And then, let's see, I'll, I'll run NeoFetch for you just so you can see what it is. Boom. Uh, shows your OS, your kernel, your uptime, stuff like that. Really neat. And then finally, we just do sudo apt remove neofetch. And that is how you uninstall uh, an application. You got to hit Y to free up the disk space. Anyway, thank you for watching this video. Uh, please let me know if you have any, uh, any, any really good feedback. Uh, thanks. Have a good day.